Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Burlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 45 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case in which multiple things did not go well. The patient was an elderly woman who presented with non-ST elevation of myocardial infarction. She did have recurrent episodes of chest discomfort and was sent for urgent coronary angiography. Diagnostic angiography was done using right radial axis. It demonstrated some uh, moderate disease in the left main. There was a severe lesion in the middle AD right before the bifurcation of a large diagonal branch and the distal LAD. And there was also a lesion in the circumflex with the CTO of the right coronary artery and the PDA PLV feeling, feeling late by collaterals. At this point, um, there was a discussion with cardiac surgery given the patient's reversal disease as well as the referring provider given her age and comorbidities she had severe COPD she was not deemed to be a surgical candidate therefore the plan was made to attempt PCI of the culprit lesion the culprit was considered to be the middle AD given the ulcerated appearance whereas the RCA was a CTO and the circumflex did not appear to be acute this is obviously a complex lesion because of the severity and it's next to a major bifurcation. That is why we used a seven friends uh, slender sheath on the radial and uh, also used the microcatheter up front together with the workhorse guide wire. Unfortunately, during attempts to cross through the lesion, which was very challenging, there was acute vessel closure. So we lost the flow all the way to the distal LAD as well as the diagonal branch. At this point, the patient started becoming hypotensive also. Um, during attempts to advance another wire and uh, regain access into the distal to lumen, there was a dissection on the left main, which was treated with uh, a stent. The patient um, had uh, uh, a brief um, duration of CPR, and a balloon pump uh, was inserted that uh, provided uh, stabilization transiently. We did consider putting her on ECMO um, or Impella, but she uh, was not deemed a good candidate for ECMO. And then we were able to try again to rewire, and this time with multiple wires, this was a pilot 200, we were able to get through that mid LAD lesion and restore some undergrade flow. Finally, we were able to get a, a workhorse wire all the way into the uh, me to distal LAD and now we did get some flow into the LAD and timid to flow into this large diagonal vessel as well. We were trying to advance a guide wire into the diagonal given the large size but uh, wiring was quite challenging and uh, after multiple attempts um, we gave up and we decided to place a stand into the mid LAD to cover that area of ulceration. The stent was placed, but immediately afterwards, with um, repeat injection, there was now a major aortocoronary dissection. Interestingly enough, the stent we had placed was not protruding all the way back to the aorta, leaving a small gap, and that is where that major aortocoronary dissection occurred. The key thing for those dissections is to not keep on injecting, but it's stand, quickly cover it with a stand and um, prevent any expansion. And that's exactly what we did. We put a short stand covering all the way from the previous stand all the way back to the aorta. And then we didn't want to inject through the guide to minimize the risk of extending the dissection. Instead, we put an export aspiration catheter into the middle AD and injected through that. And that did demonstrate that uh, there was um, um, some flow. But now there's something appearing into the LAD and the diagonal that is very worrisome for a perforation. So we put a balloon up and then uh, with repeat injection, now we did see that um, there was actually extravasation into the pericardium. So we did have a perforation. We thought initially that this was due to the diagonal at wiring attempts that were successful. We had a wire perforation in the diagonal. 
So we placed a balloon. Uh, the patient did have continued extravasation and uh, developed a tamponade, so we had to place a pericardial drain. And at this point, we do have a main vessel perforation. The mechanisms we thought initially from, was from wire, but retrospectively it might have been because of the stent placement into a diffusely diseased and calcified vessel. And the treatment for that uh, is um, standard, which is first of all to inflate a balloon to occlude the vessel, give fluids. We did do pericardiocentesis and put the catheter in given the hypotension and tamponade. And we notified the surgeons also they had already declined to do any surgery on here. And then the next uh, uh, step, if this doesn't uh, result in sealing of the perforation, is to place a cover stand for large vessel perforations. So put the balloon up transiently, unfortunately, the extravasation continued. And then it finally became apparent that it was not coming actually from the diagonal, but instead it was coming from the LAD and it was coming about at the distal edge of the previously placed stand. It was a fairly significant uh, perforation with continued extravasation. Treatment for that is cover stand. However, the challenge here is that we did have a major diagonal branch that we couldn't get a wire in, and despite multiple attempts, we weren't able to wire it. So we put uh, a multiple attempts and then eventually we were able to advance a guide wire into the diagonal branch. However, despite um, uh, the balloon inflations, once again we were not able to uh, deliver a graft master. There was severe calcification in the previous cover stand. We uh, transiently lost the wire position in the LAD. We regained the wire position in the LAD. And finally, we switched from radial to femoral have an 8 French guide and an 8 French uh, guide liner. This was extremely hard delivered down the vessel, but then despite having this set up with a big guide and guide liner, we still could not deliver the cover stand all the way to the perforation site. There is soon in 2019 going to be available a new cover stand, the Papyrus, which is much lower profile and much more flexible than the currently available Graft Master stand. And potentially having a stand like this will facilitate treating perforations like the one we had in this particular case because the availability uh, is uh, significantly better. This was extremely challenging to deliver. It took more than an hour, several attempts, intermittent balloon inflations. Uh, we were pushing extremely hard. And eventually, after a lot of attempts, we didn't quite go all the way, but that was the furthest we can get to with the cover stand, which was right at the edge of the perforation. Obviously, ideally, you want to come further down. We did have this big diagonal, and we're debating what are we going to do if we occlude this diagonal, given the size of the vessel. But at this point, we were in a conundrum. The patient was clearly bleeding in the pericardium. That was a large perforation, wouldn't be sealed. So we thought we had no choice, and this was the shortest uh, cover stand we had. Finally, we were able to deploy the cover stand, and actually it did result in sealing of the perforation. There was TIMI3 flow into the lady. However, we had jailed the origin of this large diagonal branch. There was still flow in the diagonal branch, just likely because we did not have complete sealing proximally. But it is quite likely that subsequently the diagonal occluded, and this uh, resulted in a post-procedural myocardial infarction. The patient did have a complicated post-hospital course with encephalopathy, acute kidney injury, myocardial infarction shock, and eventually died uh, four days later. Clearly a very dramatic case with a poor outcome, and a case where multiple things did not go well. We did have an acute vessel closure to start the case, uh, trying to wire this very ulcerated proximal LAD. Then we had uh, an aortocoronary dissection requiring treatment, then we also had perforation. The patient did get arrhythmia and transient arrest. She did develop tamponade from the perforation requiring pericardiocentesis and did have a significant myocardial infarction, both at baseline, but also possibly because of occlusion of this large diagonal branch. 
So there are multiple lessons from this case. One is that there is only so much capacity for a patient to overcome complication and adverse events. And at some point, when multiple adverse events occur, the margin for achieving recovery becomes low. Second is acute vessel closure. In this case, we did know it was a complex uh, lesion. We did use a microcatheter to start with, and we did start with a workhorse guide wire. However, the patient still had acute vessel closure. When that happens, the first step is to try to get a guide wire through and place a stand, because in most cases, the acute vessel closure, especially during wire attempts, is due to, dis to dissection. Sometimes you can have acute vessel closure because of spasm or because of strengthening of the vessel or embolization. But in this particular case, and I would say in the majority of cases, the reason for acute vessel closure is dissection. The second thing that happened here is the aortocoronary dissection. That uh, happened originally due to some baseline left main disease and difficulties with advancing wires and balloons. The treatment for that is to place a stent and cover the dissection and then stop injecting because more injections can result in propagation of the aortocoronary dissection. IVUS can be used to guide uh, the stent implantation and also a export catheter or other aspiration catheter can be used to uh, facilitate um, visualization of the vessel afterwards. Another point is about perforation. This was a large vessel perforation. The challenge here was that it was unclear initially whether it was coming from the LAD or from the diagonal branch. So localizing the perforation accurately, potentially with multiple views, is uh, critical for achieving sealing. As with any perforation, the first step is to advance and inflate a balloon to achieve hemostasis. If the patient develops tamponade, as was the case in our patient, then pericardiosynthesis should be done with placement of a drainage. Also be very careful to secure the drainage catheter because otherwise during the heat of the moment it can pull back and that can uh, create more complications. And uh, in terms of covering the perforation, a large vessel perforation, cover stand is the answer. The problem is that the graft master is very bulky and hard to deliver. Soon, in 2019, the papyrus stand will become available and that should facilitate treating large perforations like this. Another challenge is when the perforation happens at the site of a bifurcation, then placing a cover stand to cover the perforation may result in occlusion of the side branch, which may be a problem if, if this is a large significant side branch. There are some case reports of papyrus in which the operator can go and actually advance a wire across the papyrus and then put another regular stand there. But obviously that is very challenging and would require specialized techniques. In summary, this is a patient with uh, multiple complications and illustrates that it is very important to try to treat them as promptly as possible, but also illustrates the limitations of our techniques. Sometimes, despite all our efforts, we may not be able to achieve the desired result with uh, an eventual poor patient outcome. Thank you.